Hello, welcome to Global Business. I am Imewoyo Hyomokai. Now, I'm sure you are shocked I'm not in my normal suit and tie. Yes, that's because I am celebrating Nigeria. Did you hear of the Agbada Challenge? Yes. Did you participate? Well, I'm doing my own Agbada Challenge here right now because I am proudly Nigerian. And of course, you can see we're going to be celebrating Nigeria today on Global Business as Business Meets photography. Welcome. Before we go to our guest on the program, who has also been our guest before on the program, that's Osaze Ekato. He's a photographer, and if you remember sometime on Global Business, he was our guest and showed some of his works. But he was talking about the Abuja Photo Festival. Now, before we go there, let's go to the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill right at the National Assembly or the National Assembly that moved it to the presidency and presidency refused. What are the implications of not signing the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill? We'll be taking a look at that in this short story. And after that, we'll be back. On the 15th day of January 1956, crude oil was discovered at Oloibiri oil field, just as a child offers a beacon of hope of a better future ahead. The discovery of crude oil brought to the heart of Nigerians a hope for a better future, a new beginning. Is it? There are no lack of laws to regulate the petroleum industry. One will think that with all these laws, the petroleum industry should be well structured and functioning properly. This then begs the question, why the need for the petroleum industry bill? In the last five years, there has been 25% decline in joint venture of assets in terms of percentage contribution to crude oil production, with a corresponding decline in government revenue. Economic analysis suggests that if current trends persist without a progressive reform, Nigeria's JV production is likely to decline further by 17% in the short term and might plunge to 52% in the medium term. The Petroleum Industry Bill is divided into four parts. The Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, the Petroleum Industry Administrative Bill, the Petroleum Industry Fiscal Bill, the Petroleum Industry Host and Impacted Community Development Bill. Only the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill has been passed by the National Assembly. The Petroleum Industry Governance Bill was not assented to by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria because of a few technical reasons. So, what can be done? President Muhammad Buhari has returned the bill to the National Assembly and there are a number of options going forward. However, it is advised that the National Assembly and the Executive go back to the drawing board and talk it out. It is time to draw joy again on the dialogue table and come up with a solution. The petroleum industry is currently facing challenges such as lack of sufficient infrastructure to run the oil and gas industry, the long contract award process, scarcity of petroleum resources, the inability of the NNPC to meet its funding obligations to JV operations, pollution and environmental degradation of the Niger Delta region, the lack of a statutory base of existence of the Department of Petroleum Resources, non-functioning refineries, to mention a few. These have led to the resource mismanagement in various streams of the petroleum industry, making the headlines of the news and destroying the image of the nation. These issues have been around for a while. So why the sudden anxiety, one might ask? The proven oil reserves in Venezuela, recognized as the largest in the world, 
was totaling 297 billion barrels as of 1st January 2014. Venezuela was a land flowing with milk and honey. The story in Venezuela is no longer the same. The current situation Venezuela finds herself in is as a result of a combination of plummeting oil revenues and years of government mismanagement which crippled the country's economy, sparking a humanitarian crisis that she is battling till date. Venezuela's economy is cursed by her political regime, not her natural resources. Currently in Nigeria, oil reserves are dropping and we are further away from our 40 billion barrels goal of 2020 that we were six months ago. Worsening the situation, there are less discoveries of crude oil. The need for a properly structured petroleum industry is more urgent than we think. Considering the level of resource nationalism and mismanagement of the petroleum industry in Nigeria, we should keep asking ourselves the hard question. Are we headed the way of Venezuela? Or can something be done urgently to stop the rapid descent of our petroleum industry? For over 17 years, Nigeria has been on the journey to passing the petroleum industry bill. The closest we have gotten so far is the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill. But we all know, almost does not kill a bird. The Petroleum Industry Bill is becoming impossible. So much time and energy has been exerted with a constant back and forth. The question still stands. How much longer will it take us to get it right? We can no longer fold our arms while we watch. We have to get it right. There is only one direction for the petroleum industry. Forward. The world, although wary, is waiting for our next step. The moment we announced the PIB, we drew attention to the fact that our current statutory framework was faulty. However, what is worse than the faulty law we currently have is the uncertainty that has engulfed the industry by the non-passage of the proposed PIB. This uncertainty is a condition precedent to resource mismanagement. The time for reformation of the petroleum industry is yesterday. This is the final boarding call for all passengers booked on flight N960V to Simon Bolivia International Airport, Venezuela. Please proceed to gate 3 immediately. We invite all passengers to begin boarding at this time. Please have your boarding pass and identification ready. So what you've just watched is showing you the dangers of not having a petroleum reform. And you can imagine that Nigeria doesn't want to go towards the way of Venezuela. So let's not take that flight to Venezuela because it's dangerous. Like I told you earlier on in the program, we're looking at the Abuja Photo Festival where business is meeting photography. And we have the convener right here of the Abuja Photo Festival. But you know, the truth about it is that this festival is a collection of master photographs. Photographers, I beg your pardon. Photographers. Now, these photographers are the ones who sell Nigeria. I mean, we just celebrated our independence and we should be talking about how best to sell Nigeria, especially through soft technology. And photography, I tell you, it's one of the soft technology. Osaze Kato is right here. Osaze, welcome to Talking Point of Global Business. Thank now, you, uh, tell us, Abuja Photo Festival, this is the second time yes. it's happening. Tell us about how the impact the first festival had on Abuja and then the country. Thank you, Mr. Ima. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, first, one key area that I would like to highlight is the area of capacity development. Photography is not just a hobby like a lot of people see it. It's a profession. And when people are empowered in that direction, they can end for themselves they can end for those that are dependent on them. 
So one of the things that we achieved with Abuja International Photo Festival last year is to build capacity. We met a lot of people that didn't know where actually they were going to in photography because there are various genres in photography. Uh, so we're doing general practice. But after attending Abuja International Photo Festival, uh, they started seeing prospects in landscape photography, in documentary photography, even in wedding photography and uh, fashion photography. We're able to increase capacity. We're able to empower people with sufficient skill not just with the not just in the art of photography but also in the business of photography okay now you, you, you've just talked about the fact that there was i, I know there were a lot of master classes yes. at that point and you talked of the fact that people were empowered probably mentally yes. and also with in terms of skills yes but let me tell let me ask you how does photography, how can you use photography? Like we just watched a documentary just now on the petroleum industry bill, how Nigeria should not go the way of Venezuela and let its economy go down the drain. How can photography, for instance, let government and the people know the importance of a petroleum industry governance bill? Photography is the art of storytelling. Mm. And we live in a fast world where, uh, yes, there are a lot of write-ups, uh, there are a lot of spoken words, but nothing more over in this day and age uh, like the power of a picture. When you see a particular story on social media, when a photo is not attached to it, there's a likelihood that you wouldn't read further. When there is a voiceover maybe on a television and there is really no captivating picture to follow up with the narrative of the voice, it will hardly hold attention. The power of visual storytelling is key. As it relates to uh, the petroleum industry, uh, George Osudi has done a great work documenting the impact of oil spill in the Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. And he has gone around the world doing, document, doing um, exhibition, photo exhibition on that body of work. He has appeared on CNN, I have watched him on Al Jazeera, and I know that UK Times or uh, UK Telegraph, I can't remember the exact newspaper, has done a story on that body of work. Now, with such a body of work, the narrative, the story, the conversation around uh, petroleum as it, as it affects the community, the host community, becomes key. And I know that uh, part of the PIB is the host community uh, yes. uh, a story. Yes. So photography has a lot to do with how the PIB turns out finally. Mm. Because George Osodi has done a lot of it. Done, it, it, done, it, it did stuff uh, on the oil spill. He did stuff uh, in the mili uh, on the militants. And these are some of the things, these are some so, of the conversations. Photography is already telling the story, yes, telling of the course, story. of the yes. PIGB. Yes. Now, let's come back to the Abuja International Photo Festival. Looking at the festival and looking at what we have, you have done last year and what you're going to do this year, what's the difference of last year and this year? Or how, what are you building upon this year? There are three areas that we are doing things differently this time. First, we're using a bigger venue because we had almost 300 people attending last year. So far as we speak, a thousand people have registered. Mm -hmm. And you want to be conservative, expecting half of that. Last year, we had master classes. But the master class we're having this time, it's uh, general specific, like I mentioned earlier. Last year, we had all the photographers in one venue taking master class. But this time, we are asking the wedding photographers, stay in your class. Have all the necessary training a whole day in that class as a wedding photographer. The fashion photographer, you have your session. The documentary photographer, you have your session. The travel photographer, you have your session. Unlike what we did last year, everybody together, all the facilitators taking everybody. But this time we are customizing it because we want to encourage specialization in the industry. Yes, being, doing general practice um, might give you some few cash here and there, but when you want to become a brand in the industry, specialization is key. When you call Kelly Chiamadi, you don't call documentary. You call portrait. When you call T.Y. Bailey, you don't call documentary. You don't even call wedding. When you call Don Baba, Yes, he, is, uh, he has done a lot of stuff on documentary. When you call George Osodi, you don't call wedding. When you call Big H, you don't call documentary. When you call Jidu Dukoya, wedding comes to mind. So we want to actually inspire and challenge uh, our colleague to begin to look at practicing uh, in a particular direction. Yes, you might know everything in various areas, but be master in one session. We're having that. Then secondly, another thing that we're doing differently this time is town hall sessions. The town hall sessions are... Uh, we're bringing experts in different areas to come and discuss with photographers the prospect, the, the opportunities in those areas. For example, uh, we're looking at photography as it relates to peace promotion and conflict resolution. Mm. 
what does what role does visual storytelling has to do with conflict resolution? That's a town hall. We're looking at the future of photography. Uh, smartphones, the camera and smartphones are becoming very, very sophisticated. In the future, are we going to be using Desert Arrow or the phones are going to take over? That's a town hall that will be bringing experts that are uh, expert in uh, uh, phone cameras to come discuss with photographers how camera phones are going to be going forward. I will look at the business of photography. What is the role of trademarking? What is the role of intellectual property? What is the role of branding in photography? So these are the town hall sessions that we are having, like that we didn't have last year. Then again, uh, this year, we are having Sisters Art at ART, where we are having a class for all, uh, strictly for ladies. The industry, uh, the photography industry, it seems like uh, where we have a male-dominated industry, but ladies are going to come. You have uh, Eliano, you have Okbayemi, you have Novo, you have, of course, Stewie Bilo and several others. So we're having a special sessions for sisters, sisters are, where experts in the industry, that will be featuring Aisha, that will be featuring Okbayemi, that will be featuring uh, Novo, discuss with these ladies what it takes, what it means to be a lady, be in the industry and try very well, despite the fact that uh, it's known to be male dominated. Those are the three things that we're I'm quite in interested year. in where business meets photography. I mean, you talked about branding, trademarking, registration. Yes. I mean, how does a photographer trademark his or her work? Yes. I know I've met some photographers who have said that probably they didn't know they were so good, especially using the phones, and they did the click. And the next thing, people were using their photographs. So how do you trademark your photograph and make sure you make the big box out of it? First, the photographer should know that his work is art. Uh, I am trying to not put my work on social media because when you put your work on social media, it becomes generic. Anybody can pick it anywhere and do whatever with it. Uh, with it. But when your work is art, when you recognize that what you're creating is a masterpiece, you become very particular with it. That is why uh, when people take your picture and use it for whatever it is, you can sue them. Because that image, it's your work. It's like Picasso drawing, mm -hmm. and uh, you go to duplicate it. It's, it you, you can be sued for it. So we're looking at that particular session. We're bringing expert. We're bringing a lawyer who is expert in trademarking. We're bringing somebody from uh, the office of uh, uh, minister of uh, minister of trade and investment. We're bringing a brand expert to come let photographers know that yes, what you're doing, it's not, um, it's not, it's not not art, let me use that word. That when you're creating a masterpiece, when you're creating a second, so understand what it means to build your work as uh, intellectual property, that it is really. And I know you're bringing nine special photographers. Is it 10 actually? 10 special <laughs> photographers. Yes. Who are these people and what mark do they make in the industry that makes them so special to be in the Abuja International Photo Festival? Uh, one of the things that we're very big on uh, at the photo festival is the quality of the resource persons that we bring. People that are globally recognized, people that are globally known. And we're bringing again Don Baba this year. He was around last year. We're bringing Big H. He was around this year. He has a lot to say. This year he's talking about compositing and how to compose with light. Uh, uh, we're bringing Gideo Dukoya, who is a leader in the industry when it comes to wedding. We're bringing Novo Isioro, who is the vice president's photographer. We're bringing Haki Salam, who has done amazing work in the area of fashion photography. We're bringing Uche James Iroha. He's, uh, he's, he's an expert in documentary photography. Interestingly, fa interestingly, his father was an actor too. So he, he's coming from uh, a place because of... Because if, if, if we remember the, the green glory yes. of those days, James Iroha will, 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 come will, will, will ring a bell. Uh, we're bringing this year uh, the ambassador, the Indonesian ambassador to Nigeria. He's an ambassador and a photographer. Right. He's done a lot of stuff in photo, uh, travel photography and landscape photography. This year, he's taking the class. With his word of experience, he has over 38,000 images uh, on his social media handle. So he's coming to share his experience. We'll bring in Okoyemi this year. He's a maternal photographer and he'll be doing a lot of stuff. Uh, in that direction. We'll bring in Rodney Avo. He'll be doing a lot of stuff on how, as a photographer, you can step up and maintain your creativity. We'll bring in Amina Wakawa, who will actually be taking a session on full photography, how to take stunning images using your phones. And interestingly, sir, 
the Abuja Photo Festival experts that we are bringing, they can relate with the beginners, they can relate with the mid-level professionals, uh, with the mid-level players, and they can relate with the professionals. So whatever category you belong to, there will be something for you to take home. And this is just about five days you're going to do Yes, this. we're starting on a Monday and it's rounding up on Friday. 15th to 20th. 15 to, 15 to 19th. 15th, Friday's 15th, 19th. 15 to 19th. Yes. Okay, now, uh, uh, now uh, you have started this. This has been your dream. Yes. And I've seen you walk with this dream. Yes. Where do you see Abuja Photo Fest in another five years? <laughs> Quite interesting. Even though we try taking it a year at a time, we in five years really want to be international as we are called, where people from around the world would come to Nigeria to either come see the creative work that Nigerians are making or want to come and exhibit their work to the Nigerian space, to the Nigerian people. Bringing in money through tourism. Of course. That, 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 that's a very good one. I mean, drawing the people through tourism, yes. because this is one aspect that Nigerians believe that we have not tapped enough, even for the economy, isn't it? Yes. Last year, somebody came in all the way from Indonesia, visiting Africa for the first time. Mm. He came to speak at the Abuja Photo Festival and was also a participant uh, 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 exhibiting some of his work. We are already in talk to some of the embassies who have assured us that next year they are going to bring some of their photographers from their home country to come participate in the, in, in the Abuja International Photo Festival. In five years, we really look at being global, international indeed. Thank you very much, Osaze Ekato. And we have been at Pesta Studios where you can see that a lot is happening here. You can see the scenery as it's really photography. That's it on Global Business Talking Point. We'll wrap it up from here. When we come back, we'll be closing the program. September 26, 2018 was very important for the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The National President of the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Nasima Iyalode Alaba Lawson, and the National Executive Council officially inaugurated the Executive Council of Nasima Youth Entrepreneurs, Abuja Chapter. The Nasima Youth Entrepreneurs is a group of young entrepreneurs affiliated with the Chambers of Commerce to inspire entrepreneurship, represent and advocate for the interests of youth in business, encourage youth patronage and investment, participation in decision making among other objectives. The group is also to facilitate youth empowerment, skill acquisition for employability and self-actualization and is best described as a congregation of youth with knowledge and skills of business and entrepreneurship being mentored to equip them for effective participation in sustainable national development. So are you a skilled teenager, university undergraduate, NYC core member or an unemployed youth? The Nasima Youth Entrepreneurs Abuja chapter is by this means calling on you to make use of this great opportunity. So come join the Nasima Youth Entrepreneurs in Abuja if you reside in Abuja. Young people from different industries are all invited to take advantage of this platform and represent their interests. The young people in the commercial space in Nigeria, the young people in the economic space, the young people who are making moves, who are taking the bold step of entrepreneurship. We're encouraging them and we're mentoring them by linking them to the right people who they need to know by working closely with the chambers, the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and the other city and regional chambers of commerce, by working with international organizations to make sure that the young people who, on whose Nigeria's future rests are well represented because the youth is Nigeria's greatest resource and we must, our investment in the youth will determine the future of Nigeria. So we must take the bold steps, we must prepare our youths for tomorrow, we must engage them gainfully. We must make sure that the larger population of, of the youths are trained, that they are skilled workforce, they form a skilled workforce for, for the country. 
this would help improve, in, increase per capita income, the GDP, and you reduce poverty. Okay, so well, this is where we wrap it up on global business uh, this Monday. Remember, we have talked about photography, and not too long ago, we celebrated 58 years of independence. So I celebrate Nigeria just like I celebrate you watching. Like one musician said, the land is green. You just have to know where to tap and what green to tap to make your profit. It's always nice doing business with you. Let's do business again next week. I am Imewa Yohimohai. God of creation, direct or noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth. Hey!